Welcome to General Structures 2 and Lateral Forces, lesson number one, example number four. And it asks, what is the total pressure exerted on a retaining wall 12 feet high? All right, so what I would like to say is that you have a H equals 12 foot. Is there's a few ways to do this, what uh, they have in this book, which I'm assuming comes from the UBC, or maybe it's just a general architectural uh, rule of thumb. It says use an equivalent fluid pressure of 30 PCF. And what this is saying is, I'm going to switch colors here, is you have a retaining wall or some type of wall. I guess it doesn't need to be a retaining wall, but that's what it's doing. And we'll assume it's fixed. And here's your Sorry. here's your wall height, and that's 12 foot. So, in essence, this could be a, a lot of things. This could be a spread footing, where this is actually real quick. This is your toe, and this is your heel. A E A L. No, I think it's E E L. Anyways, and this is your stem. Right here. Heel, toe, stem, and then you can also have like a key. And a key is to prevent sliding. Alright, but I'm gonna get to that in a little bit, I guess. Right now, we don't know what's going on down here. All we're told is we have twelve foot high retaining wall. It's retaining twelve foot high. We we want to use an equivalent th fluid pressure of 30 pounds per cubic foot. How do you come away with that? I'm going to tell you right now that it, this this geotechnical type of engineering soils is very complicated. It, it is, we're not giving it justice. It, you have books and books to learn this. And, and you actually go into the the IBC is what, what I typically use um, when, when looking at uh, municipalities or just buildings and you you go to section 1610 which is soil lateral loads and it is one paragraph maybe two and once again they have books and books on the the on this so simply saying that oh okay we're gonna as a rule of thumb use 30 PCF for every single retaining wall we have that is very dangerous and I would never never recommend somebody going out there and doing that it is a, a lot more difficult than that, and I'll get into that. But let's 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 for your test. This is the way. Apparently, it's a architectural rule of thumb. Use the equivalent fluid pressure of 30 PCF, and I'm going to explain what that means exactly. So, if you're given anything like this, that's how you want to look at it. Okay, we have fixed down here, so we don't need to worry about it. That's not going anywhere. You can just say that's concrete everywhere. It's a infinite amount of concrete this way, an infinite amount of extremely rigid concrete that way in your retaining soil. What you want to do is rule of thumb say 30 PCF, which 30 PCF means that you have 30 pounds per cubic foot. And I'm going to try to explain what that means exactly real quick. What that means is typically what you'll have is 120 when I said 120, that's force of habit because I use kips per cubic foot typically for soil pressure. But you have 120 PCF. And what that is saying is this, this soil weighs that much. This equivalent fluid pressure is 30 PCF, meaning this soil horizontally is going to exert 120 PCF. I hope that makes sense. If you have... 100 you have a foot wide it's going to be you know this is uh, going to be 120 pc at pounds per cubic foot you have a square foot that means you're going to have 120 pounds coming straight down times how many feet you have and that would end up being that way now this 30 pcf means that out of this 120 pounds, it's saying that a quarter of it you're going to see horizontal. So you have 120 pounds vertical, a quarter of that 
is going to be horizontal, which it turns out with a K. And that's all I'm going to say for right now because there's different types of K, but a K of a, a coefficient of 0.25. So if you said 120 times 0 0.25, you get 30 PCF. But that might be confusing. It's the horizontal projection of this vertical load. All right, so what this ends up doing, I'm going to get rid of this as well because that might be confusing you. What you want to do is say equivalent fluid pressure, 30 PSF, PCF, sorry. And what that is going to do is going to make this wedge. It's a pressure wedge. And just like water, if you are in a swimming pool, you go down into the deep end, you'll notice that your ears get your ears start feeling pressure and that's the, the reason and more and more water is on top of you and you're going to feel more and more pressure the more the deeper you go so that's what you're seeing right there and that's the same thing that's going to happen in the soil theoretically and okay so that's what's going to happen that's our wedge but what exactly is this 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 value and this value this value is zero PSF and this value is going to be 30 PCF times the depth, which is 12 foot. So 30 times 12, 360, and that's PSF. All right, so you have that. And now you, what you want to do is find the equivalent equivalent load. And this is similar to how we figured out the equivalent load when we were doing our shear moment diagrams. The, this equivalent load is the area under this curve right there, if you want to call it that. The area under this line and this. So you could, and then the, the retaining wall. So you could look at it as a beam, if that makes sense simpler. A little bit more. So as if we rotated that over, it, that's what it would look like. So you say, okay, well, what is our equivalent of this? Well, we know it's this acts two thirds, so that's one two. Th sorry, that's bad. This is one third. This is two thirds, and that's three thirds. So it acts two thirds over, and this, let's call it PA, equals the area. Let's change the colors. It equals the area under that that line which is, let's change that one half, because it's a triangle, it's the area of that triangle, the area of triangles one half base times height, which is going to be, we'll, we'll translate it back over here, one half, actually well, I'm going to get rid of this again. You saw what I was trying to do there, and we'll get rid of it real quick like. Okay, so one half base times height is the area of that triangle, one half base height, I'll just keep that same terminology, and this is your, you could call this your height, and let's call this your base, and because it's triangle, that's why you have the one half. So one half base is 12 foot, 0.5 or one half, 12 foot for base, times height is 360 PSF, and we get 0.5 times 12 times 360. 2,160 PLF. And you can work that out. If you have pounds per foot squared, that's pounds per square foot, times foot, you cancel out one, cancel out that, you have pounds per foot, pounds per linear foot. That's what PLF means. All right, and that is your answer. It be, And that's simply because it doesn't tell you how how wide this wall is. If they said for a a 60 foot wall, you know, if this is 60 foot, what is that total? They could have said, what is that total load? And if they would ask that question, given the 60 foot wall, I would have said, oh, well, you know, this, because this equivalent load looks like that. Not the best drawing of all time, but I hopefully this gets your point. This is the PLF right here. This is that PLF. It's a linear line. 
it's uh, meaning it's uh, just one dimension and it's going that way it's got a so that's your this this right here is what I'm trying to show is your 2100 pounds per linear foot and then you multiply it by, by your linear foot and it would be the same as looking at it like a beam like so you look you could look at it like this with 2100 and you say this W equals 2160 PLF times your equivalent load once again that's a squiggly line that's how I show it this is now a rectangle and you get 2100 times we said 60 2100 times 60 is oh I think 1 million or 129,600 don't I might be wrong on that because my my calculator is kinda messed up so that's what that would be that would be the total load that would be a point load this is a line load and let's see what they ask I said what is the total pressure exerted on a retaining wall 12 feet high this would be the best answer right here this 2160 because it doesn't give you a length of wall so you can't say the total pressure so the total pressure per foot would if they would have asked that I, I, if I were asking this question wording it I would say what is the total pressure or linear pressure exerted on a retaining wall 12 feet high or what is the it, what is the total pressure in pounds per linear foot exerted on a retaining full, w wall 12 foot high I think that would have been a little bit better way to say it but that's alright you just have to know what they're asking for and what you can give them. So there's your answer, 2160, what, 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 which is what I would say. All right, and you know, I have three minutes. Can I try to explain geotechnical engineering in all its glory in three minutes? I will attempt to do so. Once again, do not feel like you don't know it, like you're getting lost. That should happen because this is going to be extremely fast. Okay, that equivalent fluid pressure, that is a big assumption. Assum assuming this is a big assumption. That you have a few different ways of looking at this. There's an at-rest um, situation, there's an active situation, there's a passive situation. Where at-rest is kind of like not moving. Active is when it's starting to move a little bit. This is, you're assuming it's moving a little bit. And then passive is that resisting that movement. So active would be up here, and then passive would be, you, usually you neglect this, but this little bit right here could, could uh, go against that. It's going, to, it's going to resist that movement. All right, so that's the basic theory. Where you get this equivalent fluid pressure is this, depending on what soil you have, I'm going to switch colors here, depending on what soil you have, you have these different fee factors. And that's, depending on the soil, you know, something's going to be a little bit steeper if it's a little bit more, and I'm going to stop trying to use cohesion. In the end, it gets very, very complicated. And what you need to know is that this soil, that's your, your vertical pressure, is going to be usually around 120 pounds per cubic foot, and that you're going to have some of that soil pressure in addition to that, depending on how much it falls over to the side, so if it's like it's close to being water, it's gonna it's gonna exert a lot. If it's clay and it's sticky and it's not going anywhere, then it's not gonna exert as much. But you have other issues when you have clay. Once again, this gets very complicated, and I'm not gonna get into it. But what you end up coming from this, you get a K value, and then you multiply that times the weight of your soil, which is this is what I've been saying is 120 PCF typically. This is a very, very typical situation. So, and that will give you the EFP, this equivalent fluid pressure. And just to get to this point is kind of confusing. And then on top of everything like this, when you look at this, there's a few things it can do. And I've said this in a past video, I believe, but you can have overturning, you can have sliding. Sliding means it's sliding right to the left and right, and if you don't have enough passive over here, it's gonna that wall will just move. And then you have um, this; it could sloop like that, and that's a global failure. Very complicated. 
just remember 30 PSF and you'll be fine.